Happy Monday. I'm Johnny Mack, your host of Daily Comedy News. Conan O'Brien tweeted, I just heard that most of the babies recently born in New Zealand take a moment to look around and then loudly say, oh, hell yeah. Tata Alexandro tweets, our elections mostly determine who will be on SNL the next four years. Stephen Colbert said, thank God it's Kamala. I was worried Biden was going to pick someone else who would have made me absolutely still vote for him no matter what. (laughs) Trump tried to give Kamala Harris some nicknames, Stephen Colbert said. What a wonderful use of the commander in chief's time. What is he talking about? Harris is an establishment Democrat and a former prosecutor. It's so clear that Trump has a different set of opponents in mind, and now he's having trouble changing strategies. Of course she's ambitious. She's running for vice president. Who does that without ambition? He points out that nobody just falls into becoming the second most powerful person in the world. Recently, the president suggested that he should be on Mount Rushmore. That made Trevor Noah say, I think we should put Trump on Mount Rushmore. I think we should actually put him on Mount Rushmore. No phone, no Internet. Problem solved. Seth Meyer said, that's like going up to a priest after mask and asking him, so what's the process for adding someone to the Trinity? Seth, again, even if there was a process to get on Mount Rushmore, I'm pretty sure presiding over the preventable deaths of 160,000 Americans and the worst economic crash since the Great Depression would be disqualifying. That's like asking your boss at Chipotle when you're getting your employee of the month plaque after you get caught stirring guacamole with your skateboard. Seth, again, besides, I'm pretty sure the other presidents would be weirded out having Trump next to them. They'd all scooch over to one side of the mountain like passengers on the F train after a dude takes a dump. Three from Jimmy Fallon. Apparently, Trump said it was his dream to have his face added. Yeah, that's sort of like Dr. Fauci saying it's his dream to play center for the L.A. Lakers. Fallon, turns out a fifth president can't be added to Mount Rushmore because the rocks around it are unstable. Actually, the more I think about it, having something unstable means he's already part of Mount Rushmore. Clap, 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 clap. Fallon, I think Trump's wasting his time at Mount Rushmore if he wants something carved into the rock that looks like him. The orange hue of the Grand Canyon is a much better option. Bert Kreischer spoke to The Wrap about his drive-in concerts. He said, when you think drive-ins, all I think is glorified parking lot and the places where we've performed have been amazing. The result is a combination of a football tailgate party and a comedy club. Bert says, it is intimate. You're inside their cars. You're inside their small groups and everyone's tailgating. It's got a communal feeling. I think for everyone who's been following the rules when it comes to quarantining and social distancing and following the rules during the pandemic, this has been a real gift type of feel. Bert says, I think you have to be someone who can sell at least 1,600 tickets. I wonder why that number. 1,600 tickets of people wanting to see you in a car. So not every comic's going to have the opportunity to do it. And you have to be a little larger on stage and people have to be fans. He says it's also pretty expensive. He's traveling with a 10-person crew to operate production, which includes a full stage, two tour buses, and a semi-truck that hauls the stage. He says it's a legit Metallica production, which is different than a guy who usually travels by himself and is just used to walking into a club and performing. For me, I'm in a position where I could do a tour and money will not be the driving thing for me. He said he didn't see many audience members wearing masks, even though he and his crew had a strict mask on policy. During the initial leg of the tour in July, he said he had zero personal contact with anyone and hasn't come within 10 feet of another human for the entire tour. He says, I've also been hyper aware of not judging people. I'm not a fan of L.A. comics who dump on what they call the flyover states and dump on their belief systems too much. In all honesty, with this coronavirus, I just shut my mouth, and if anything, I tell people, hey, I'm a little bit of a libertarian on this issue. Jim Brewer is also taking to the parking lot. If you're in New Jersey on August 23rd, he'll be playing Englewood's Bergen Performing Arts Center parking lot. It'll be held in the parking lot of the Westfield Garden State Plaza Mall. (laughs) I'm friends with Jim. I'm curious about this. Jim says it's very unhealthy for us to not see each other smiling. It's unhealthy for your mind, for your soul, and our beings. It'll be his first public performance since the onset of the pandemic. We need this right now. We need to get together. We need to laugh, says Jim Brewer. CBS Sacramento caught up with Joe List. Joe spoke about shooting his recent special in front of about 250 people at the Comedy Cellar in New York. He's glad he shot it there. He said, I'm on the road all the time and I'm a road dog. I do 45 weeks on the road and usually do one show Thursday to Friday to Saturday and sometimes a Sunday show. It's a lot of shows. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I just wanted to capture that feeling. The main goal was to get the feeling of one stand-up show. I wanted to do it at a club and not a big theater, and I wasn't trying to change anybody's life. I wanted to do a fun hour of comedy. I wanted it to be like a documentary of our show. 
Chris Rock said, you shoot a special in the venue you most often perform. That was my home club. Sometimes you see these comedy specials and there's a big swinging crane camera, smoke and crazy lights. I didn't want any of that. I wanted Joe at the Comedy Cellar. I agree with Joe. These big fancy specials that come on Netflix, like I get it if you're of a certain stature, like, I don't know, Ricky Gervais, if he does a theater show. Yeah, okay. But some of these, I'm just like, can we just style it down? That's one of the reasons I really liked Sam J's special. It looked like there were nine people in the audience and it was great joe talked about the time he went on letterman he said the show was amazing it was nerve-wracking but it was just an amazing experience i remember taking the elevator down and getting ready to go on the stage and talking to the sound guy when you do a late night show you're the only one in the building that's nervous everyone else is just at work i remember it being really fun and paul schaefer standing two feet from you laughing shuffling papers i remember being nervous and also feeling great the crowd is so hot and such a great crowd it was pretty magical and then dave came over it was unbelievable it was a dream come true for sure from Variety, Sean Penn will take part in an all-star table read of his classic 1982 coming-of-age film, Fast Times at Richmond High. The lineup includes Penn, Jennifer Aniston, Shia LaBeouf, Matthew McConaughey, Julia Roberts, Dean Cook, Morgan Freeman, and Henry Golding. More names to be announced. This will take place August 20th on Facebook Live and TikTok. Proceeds will benefit emergency relief nonprofit CORE's work in the fight against COVID-19. Now, interesting to me... Penn will not be playing his iconic stoner character, Jeff Spicoli. The actor's characters will be announced on the night of the event. So my guess is Sean Penn, who is 60 now, will play Mr. Hand, because that's the kind of thing that'll be ha-ha in the press, right? Like, look, he used to be Spicoli, now he's Mr. Hand, da-da-da. It's my guess there. And just based upon the names they announced, I guess Dane Cook would be a pretty good Jeff Spicoli now, Dane is 48, but if this is just a table read, yeah, I think Dane's got the right vibe to play Jeff Spicoli. So we will see that is August 20th, Facebook Live and TikTok. How about we reimagine The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as a drama? This from the Laugh Button. Last year, Morgan Cooper had an idea for a neat YouTube video, and he took the initial parts of the sitcom and he remixed it and he made it look like a trailer for a you know dramatic version of the show. It caught the attention of Will Smith. Smith's Westbrook Studios will produce the series alongside Universal Television. The guy Morgan Cooper that came up with the idea will produce and direct the series and co-write it with showrunner Chris Collins. The series, again, a serious version of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The series will take place in today's world and explore some of the darker elements of the social change for its lead character going from the streets of Philadelphia to the gated community of Bel-Air. It will also explore what it's like to be a black man in America today, something that was touched on in the original series with the occasional special episodes. I got two more for you. Let me clean out all the news. Hey, Australian sitcom Metrosexual is coming to North America. It'll premiere September 1st in the U.S. on the free streaming service Crackle. Metrosexual is the first Australian sitcom with all LGBTQ plus lead characters filmed in mockumentary style. It starts with the serious premise that thanks to dating apps, more people are catching sexually transmitted infections than ever before. Comedy episodes follow the lives of doctors Stephanie and Langdon, who work at the Metropolitan Sexual Health Club clinic that sounds pretty funny and kevin hart is getting his celebrity game face on once again this from variety yeah he's ordered five more episodes of the hart hosted quarantine game show these five new episodes will continue to see hart and his wife go up against four other celebrity couples in a series of quote outrageous at home challenges the games they'll be playing include big facts that's where partners guess which personal fun facts are true or false Read My Lips, where they guess phrases while wearing noise-canceling headphones, and Booty Shake, which consists of partners using their best dance moves to empty as many balls out of a box wrapped around their waist in a matter of seconds. Very exciting. Not. I'm, I'm not watching that. That's your comedy news for today. If you are new to this, I do this seven days a week. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. You can follow the show on Spotify. And if you want to hear some stand-up, I host something called The Weekly Comedy Thing. You'll find that on the free Live by Live app, Live X Live, if you want to type it in your search engine. On there, you'll find music stations and music playlists, you know, like, you know, like streaming services do. And there are comedy stations on there. I program all of those. And I also host The Weekly Comedy Thing, a weekly show that's kind of sort of like this, where I do some stand up news and I play the bits in between. So you can do that. Other than that, Daily Comedy News will return tomorrow. <laughs>